Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah. Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليم كثيرا أما بعض فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلال كل ضلالة في النار. When I was coming to the masjid, I actually was going to give the khutbah to shed light and raise awareness about what's going on in Ukraine and how it affects the Muslims, because a lot of Muslims have no idea how Al-Islam is caught in the middle of that conflict, and that there are Muslims who are being oppressed by both sides, by the EU and America and the people who are supporting that side, and also by the Russians themselves. The Muslims are dead smack in the middle. It's an area where there are a lot of Muslims. But on my way here, I realized we have a lot of Shabbat. I actually forgot this was the ijazah for the Shabbat. So I knew that now there are going to be a lot of Shabbat in the audience, as you can see. So I was forced. I have to change the topic. I have to change the topic to make it more appropriate, to help those Shabbat to understand that they have a responsibility in El Islam and in the community, and that we as adults and parents, even those of you who are not married and you don't have children. We have a responsibility to the Shabbat of our community. And that's because we all claim, and inshallah, it's a da'wah that's true. We all claim that we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not a person here that doesn't claim that. Even the brand spanking new weak Muslim here, he claims that. Well, in loving him, we have to understand that from his sunnah is, he paid a lot of attention to the category of the Shabbat. That's from the Sunnah. And it's not from one of those Sunnahs that people can be mutahawinun in, mutakasirun. Some Sunnahs are more important than others. For an example, there's no one in our ministry who's taking care of the issue of the miswak. The miswak is indeed is important, but it's not as important as taking care of the Shabbat. And you'll find, unfortunately, with the fiqh, that saqeen, with a lot of the people is that they don't have comprehension of the awwadiyat. They put a lot of emphasis on something that may be important, but there are more emphasis on other things. So the Nabi of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came and he dealt with the shabab and al-Islam. If this community doesn't do it, then you're not following an integral part of the sunnah. If you as a father, you're not doing it, you're an adult, you're not doing it, 
getting behind helping this Shabbat, and you're not following one of the most integral and important parts and aspects of the Sunnah. Allah mentioned a number of ayat of the Quran. Qul, ya ayyuhannas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'a. Tell all of the people, ya Muhammad, all of the people, I have been sent as a messenger to all of you. So he's sent as a messenger to white people in Kufa, contrary to what the world believes. The world thinks that Muhammad is the messenger of the Arabs and the Muslims. Well, Amr Laysa Kadari. The Prophet of Islam has been sent to everybody. And if you were a Muslim, after his death, you have part of the responsibility to spread Islam in the right way. That doesn't mean you have to get up here. That just means, as a person working with non-Muslims, to give them a good example of Al-Islam. To speak about the truth and don't give people khurafat. We have to, as a community, give a consistent surah and a consistent da'wah of what Al-Islam is. So, that ayah goes to show He's a Rasul to everybody. He's a messenger to the Shabbat right here. So I'm not young. I can exclude myself from the equation. Rasulullah was sent directly to the Shabbat right here. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Ayat, Tabarak al-Ladhi nazzal al-Furqan ala abdihi liyakuna lal-alameen nazira. Glory to Allah who revealed the Quran, the Furqan, ala ala adi, Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For what? So that he can be a Nadir. He can be a Nadir. The Quran can be a Nadir to the Alameen. And from the Alameen, are those Shabbat. Your kids and my kids, who in this society are struggling with, what is their identity? Who are they? Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, He was sent to everybody. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا لِلنَّاسِ كَافَةً إِلَّا كَافَةً He was sent as someone who came to all of the people. And from those people, the elderly, the sick, the Arab, the non-Arab, the black, the white, the rich, the intelligent, the one who can't read, he can't write, the ummiyin. I look at his audience, I know for a fact People in this audience, their mother and fathers can't read. Their grandmother and grandfather, they can't write their names. Does that mean that they're down? Down? That they're from the Asfal and Safini? No. Rasulullah was sent to those people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ahkam of al-Islam. The adab of al-Islam. Even the one who is ummi. La yaktu wa la yaqra. The Nabi of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sent to that man and that lady with a dawah and the risala that they can understand. Yes. So, Al-Islam took care of paying attention to the Shabbat. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He has been sent as a rahma. How a rahma? There was a young man living during the time of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A teenager like our teenagers. My teenager, and I'm inside of my house watching my kids, but I know for a fact that my kids are up to things that I don't know about. That's the nature of this generation. I was raised in Jahiliya. I tasted it. I drank. I know Jahiliya. So I know what to look for. You may not know what to look for in this society. I know Muslim parents who their daughters were drinking vodka in the house. The mother and the father don't even know. Smoking weed. They don't even know that's weed. I'm not blaming them, but I'm saying to you, I know what it smells like, look like, tastes. And I know that my children are exposed to things. What about the person who doesn't know anything? He's laughing for one reason or another. Your children and my children, even the little kids. If your child has access to social media, more than likely, your child knows about pornography. Real straight up pornography. I'm not talking about where they watch little cartoons and a girl has tight clothes on or the cartoon has tight clothes on. I'm talking about sex pornography. Our children are exposed to that. The Nabi of Islam came to deal with that. There was a young man who was a teenager. He came, he was complaining. He had a class. He wasn't a mujrim, a facet. He had a class, he wanted to do the right thing. But his shahwa, his shahwa was on him. His shahwa, that's how Allah created your daughter and my daughter. Allah, you can put your head in the ground if you want to. 
my daughter and your daughter, not just your son and my son. That's how Allah created these people. That's how he created you and me. The man, the boy came and said, Ya Rasulullah, it the leave is zina. Give me permission to make zina. It's hard for me. I'm waking up every day. It's on my mind. All during the course of the day. This is what I'm thinking about. Ya Rasulullah, I don't want to do haram. You know we have women in society in Medina who do this from the Mushrikeen, from the Mushrikat, from the Yahud, from the Nasara, people making money. Just give me permission. I go off. No one has to know. Just Allah, you and me, Ya Rasulullah. He was sent as a Rahmah. When that boy said that, everybody in the audience looked at him as if they said, Ay, ah, what are you doing? That's Fadiha. I'm your father. You say that in front of the people. People look at, what's wrong with you? I'm going to break your head when we get home, embarrassing me like that. What did the Nabi of Islam do? He said, come here. Relax. Little relax. Don't be upset with him. He asked that boy, you want somebody to do that to your mother? And he said, I would be that. To your sister, I would be that. To your khala, I would be that. To your amma, I would be that. He said, that's right. People don't want that as well. He took the little boy and he, he hugged that boy and made dua for that boy because it's a rahmah. I don't care what these kofars say. Me, personally. That he was a person who was Safku Dima. He was always Saf hey, that's your Kevin. I wouldn't have been that I read about. He was a Rahma like that to that boy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My son comes to me with certain things. Sometimes it's hard for me to make this diab of what he's saying. The knee-jerk reaction is to choke him until his life goes out. But that's not the way you have to deal with it. Whether you like it or not, whether I like it or not, these are our children. And that's how the Prophet came to them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was sent to all of the people. He said about the Prophets and the Messengers, فُضِلْتُ عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ بِسِتَّةِ I have been raised upon above all other Prophets with six things. It's actually more, but this hadith mentions six. One of those things he said, وَأُرْسِلْتُ إِلَى النَّاسِ كَافَةً I've been sent to all of the people. Black, white, red, whatever. He was sent to everybody. So look at the tatbiq of this during the time of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this masjid, on this floor, downstairs, men and women, the companions were sitting one day, and someone came up with the question, who do you think Rasulullah loves the most out of all of us? Rasulullah is here, and we've been dealing with him for how many years? He treated you good. You had a kid that was sick, you needed zakat, you needed an issue, you needed advice, Whatever you needed, he was there for you. He was there for everybody here. Never said to anyone, I don't have time for you. You go to him with your baby, Ya Rasulullah. My baby keeps crying. Maybe he has Ayn. Maybe he's Mashur. Ya Rasul. He wouldn't say, don't come back late, I'm busy. You come to everybody in this room. We don't have access to the Imam in our community. I want to see the Imam. I want to talk to the Imam. He said, okay, go over there. You see that thing over there? You just take your number. When your number comes up, then you come. Three days after you request it. That's if you get the regular Imam. Rasulullah was the one responsible for the whole Ummah. So those people said, who do you think he loves the most? He said, he loves me the most. He said, Muftakhira. He loves me the most. He said, no, Allah. He swear by Allah. The companions didn't swear by Allah. But he wanted to make a tahalluk. He wanted to let you know. Wallahi, he loves me the most. Now, Wallahi, kazeb, akhtar. He loves me. And they started arguing. One of the companions, it was his responsibility. He saw that the people were upset. They were not thinking. He said, hey, take it easy. Allah told us in the Quran, Ya ayyul ladheena aminu, atiullah wa atiul rasul, wa ulal amri minkum. فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرُ وَأَحْسُنُ تَأْوِيلًا Hey guys, hey, 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 stop arguing and fighting. Don't you remember as Muslims what we're supposed to do when we have ikhtilaf? You don't keep arguing with me. Ali Muhammad said, but then Imam Shafi said, but we do it, but he did. We don't keep going back like that. Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, he said, don't you remember what Allah said? Oh, you believe. Obey Allah. Obey his messenger. And obey those who have been in authority over you. And if you have ikhtilaf, you argue about anything, then refer it back to Allah and his messenger. 
Where's the devil in the Quran and the Sunnah, Shabbat? Don't tell me about what George Bush shared, what your country, don't tell me about that. Let's refer it back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. Now, if it's in the dunya, let's refer it back to knowledge-based issues, not emotions. So they said, okay, let's go and ask him. They went, they knocked on his door just to ask him the question, who do you love the most? He didn't come to the door with hot water and pour on the people and say, get out of here. I'm the leader, like our leaders may do. Pour water, hot oil on us. Get out of the way, out of my door. Get access to him. Go into his house, a bunch of people. Ya Rasulullah, we need to ask you something. He come out, what, what, what? We want to know, who's the most beloved person to you? He was sent to everybody, that's the point. He felt he was the most beloved. He felt, he felt, because he sent everybody. If you were there, you would have felt the same way. Some of us have children, two, three, four. Our children know who's the most beloved to the mother and the father. You know from your siblings who was the most beloved. Rasulullah's people didn't know that. They were arguing. He loved me, wallahi. Rasulullah looked at the situation, he said, I love Aisha the most. She wasn't even there. I love Aisha. He didn't do that from Tadis or Khof. He did that because it's the hop. What man doesn't love his woman the most? But in our masjid, some of us love our wives, but we love our friends more. That's why we spend more money on our friends. That's why we have more rahmah with our friends. That's why we have more, you know, we have, we have that leaning. We easy with our friends. With our wife, rough and tough. I love Aisha the most. But so a lot of the people say, nah, we know you love your wife the most. We don't mean that. We mean from amongst us. He looked at this situation. He said, Ibn Abaha, Abba Bakr. And I love her father the most. I love Abu Bakr the most. That hadith shows many things. What I'm using it for is, he was sent to everybody. And everybody thought that they would love the most. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I can't let this hadith pass by without saying, any and everyone who hates Abu Bakr and hates Aisha, then we say to them, something's wrong with you. The Nabi of Islam loved Abu Bakr the most in Aisha. And you come and you curse Abu Bakr and Umar and, and, and Aisha. I would say from emotion, Lanatullah on you. But I don't want to say that. You're a miskeen. You're a miskeen. And Lanatullah is big. I ain't going to say that. You're misguided. The Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khwani, came to the Shabbat. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, those of us who have little kids, two, three, and they're all pretty and beautiful, and we just love them and everything, but then we look at our kids, 15, 20, 22, you have to remember they were small and beautiful and cuddly at one time, but they're living in 2022. A lot of challenges. Islam came to deal with them. Our children are struggling with who they are. So what did the Prophet do during that time? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He chose the youngest people to give them ihtiman to them, consideration. And Islam started. Rasulullah was not Sufi. He was not Khabib. Hashir Allah. He was the Aqil al-Nas. Wallahi. We have an idara here. We're responsible, the administration, of trying to steer this masjid, this community. We need hikmah, we need dawah, we need ansar, we need support. We don't need, you know, fly by Muslims, you know, we just come here. We need experience. Rasulullah, he had hikmah, aqil and ilm. What did he do? A brand spanking new Muslim ummah, they started. He focused on those shabab, 13, 14. And he made those shabab the hufad of the sunnah. That sunnah that we know what we're doing for Salat al and Eid, Salat al Fajr, Salat al Juma, where how we know it was those Shabbat. So if you look at the seven companions who narrated the majority of the Hadith, they were babies when Al Islam started. Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al As, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Anas ibn Umarik, and another lady, Aisha. He was sent to all of the people. I love my wife the most. He was sent to the woman, the Ahkam of Al Islam, Surat al Nisa, the Adab of Al Islam, came and told everybody here you got a wife, you got a sister, you got a mother, you better respect her, you better protect her, you better honor her. That's how Al Islam came addressing that woman. 
Rasulullah, that woman in Jahidiyyah, those Arabs, they had that lady in slavery, even if she was free. Her baby didn't belong to her. Her body didn't belong to her. Her mind didn't belong to her. Her wealth didn't belong to her until Al Islam came to her. Now, the men of today, we're doing what they did in Jahiriyyah, but that's what we do. That's not the Kitab, that's not the Sunnah. The Prophet came, and those Shabab that I just mentioned, they were 12, 13 years old. And when he would die, they were 17, they were 18, they were 20, 22. He died. And the sunnah was there. So grown men would go to those shabab of the companions. It's just how he did. He came to the youngsters. His dawah of Islam. What about us? I'm working hard. I have shabab. But I'm muhmim. I'm muqassim. I actually believe and I think I have personal fun about my children. You have to have personal fun to a certain level. But I'm telling you, our children are exposed to that which will destroy them. The Nabi of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to the Shabbat. He would take one of those little people and put him on the camel with him and say, Ya Ghulam, hey young boy, hey listen, I'm about to give you some jewels. Remember Allah, Allah, remember you. Remember Allah in good times, Allah remember you in bad times. If you ask, ask of Allah. Don't you be afraid of anybody but Allah. And he used to drop those jewels, giving time to the young. How do you think the young man feels? Where the grown-ups all feel, hey, I'm honored that I have access to the Nabi. And here the young man is riding behind the Nabi, feeling the message of Allah. And he turns around and starts schooling him and educating him about jewels for life. If you ask, ask of Allah. Don't ask me first. Don't ask the people. If you're afraid, be afraid of Allah. Don't let nobody tell you your color. You can't. Your religion. How do you think that's going to impact on the minds of those companions? It's going to impact and it's going to affect them in a way that their religion is going to grow. But I, Abu Sama, come into the religion and I read the qasas and the stories of the people of the past. And it's just a oh, whole nice story. And I'm blown in the wind. Oh, in the scene. And then I'm, no, it's not like that. I got to get my feet in the dirt. I got to get with my kids. And I have to start talking to my kids. I don't have any kids. Okay, you don't have any children, but you love the sunnah. You love the sunnah. The vast majority of people who attend the classes in this masjid are with Shabbat. I'm not putting you down, I'm just letting you know. So what does that mean? You don't have any kids? Then give to the masjid to help the situation with those lessons. You be a person. Come to one of the mu'allimin. They're teaching your children, the mu'allimin. You want to help? Give that man some money on the side. And tell that man who's teaching your children the Quran, I appreciate what you do. Not to me. To the ones who are teaching the Quran, you don't have children. The Prophet paid attention, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to the shabab of Al Islam. Ya ma'ashir al shabab, man istata' minkum al ba'a, fal yatazawwij. Ya akhi, Qasim, look what the Prophet said to you, and you're sitting right here. Oh, you young people, you shabab, I'm 58. You're below me. You're 20, 32. Rasulullah said to you, Hey, you young people, Qasim, Hudayfa, hey, you young people, any of you have the ability to get married? Hurry up and get married. Go and get you a nice girl and get married. And if you don't have the money to do that, then fast. Fast on Mondays and Thursdays. That's back then. What about now? A shahid? That's the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talking to you directly. <coughs> talking to you directly. So brothers and sisters in El Islam, one of the most important sunnahs is taking care of these youth. And if you don't have a child, what does it mean? You have nephews, you have nieces. Out of the clear blow, why not reach out to them with a gesture of goodwill? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum wa nasallallaha at tawfiq. What said that? Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran wa tayyiban mubarakan fi. There's an ayat of the Quran very appropriate for our community right now. And it's a statement of Allah Ta'ala that He has created man and how He has created us in our asr. That He created us from one single man, Adam, and from Adam's wife, Hawa. 
And he made from them many nations and many tribes. He made us nations and tribes. Look how you look. Your colors is an ayah from the ayat of Allah. Nation, that's Afghani, Bangladeshi, Sudani, Sumari. That's an Arab from Africa in the north. That's one over there from the Khalij. He made us nations and tribes. So now I'm a part of your life. You're a part of my life. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know where you come from. So I've eaten Asida from Sudan. I've eaten. <laughs> no, this is the point. I've eaten food from the Afghan and I saw their custom. I went to the Libyan brother's house and I can't even remember the meal that I ate and the way we ate it. So I'm getting to know these people and how things are with them. And they get to know me as well from um, this member and other than that. Why, why, what's what, what the ayah said? So that you can get to know one another and you make iktisad and you take from each other and you make a better situation for yourself in the community. Now the issue is, what if you don't know yourself? How are you going to know somebody else? Our Shabbat, they don't know themselves. How the hell are they going to know somebody else? So one of them, he wants an afro, and he wants to put his afro with braids in it like Rastafarians. Another one wants to wear his clothes, and he wants his clothes down his pants like that. The other girl leaves your house with her hijab on like it's a common practice in Birmingham. Islam in Birmingham is in a higher level. So to bring your children from Birmingham to Leeds, oh, it's a higher level. But some of the Islamic schools in Birmingham are a problem. The girls go to the school with hijab and jilbab on. When they get it, they take it off. And then they go to city center to hook up with kufar boys. And get on a train with kufar boys and hang out with them. Why? Why? Because she doesn't know who the hell she is. They created you nations and tribes so that you can get to know each other. Well, if your kid doesn't know who he is, how in the world is he going to get to know somebody else? Our children have identity crisis today, not because they're bad, not because they want to not know who they are. Part of it is because of the environment. His mom and dad are saying Islam. His ajdad are saying Islam. His ism is saying ajda Islam, all of that. But his telephone is not saying that. <coughs> his friends are not saying that. They're not saying that in the school. So now, identity crisis. The girl, Muslim girl is saying, don't call me she no more. Call me her, call me it, call me they. And if you have any etirad against that, they will take your kid away from you. This is what we're dealing with. So the call here is from the administration of this masjid. We're here to do our job. But as we teach your kids, we can see many of our kids are not getting terribly at home. And i just give you one quick example. We are about to pray Salat al-Jumah. You know when the companions pray the Salat behind the Nabi, they had discipline. Pay attention to this. It's a challenge to our community. It's a challenge to every one of you. When the Prophet used to pray, Shaykh Sa'id al-Afghani, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray. When he went into Ruku, Allahu Akbar, no one would move until he finished his Ruku. And then when he got into his Ruku, everybody got into Ruku. You watch our prayer. And you watch how many people to the right and the left are making musabaka with the imam. You watch. So when the kid comes to the masjid and he doesn't have discipline, the mu'allimun can't get mad at the kid all the time. Some of the stuff that the kids do, we're mad because he knows that's wrong to put his middle finger up at another kid. That's wrong. He knows that. But there are some things he's just not being taught. It started at home. The genesis of the problem is he didn't learn at home. So that's a challenge. That's a challenge. And this is just an example I'm giving you, not to put anyone down. When we pray, Rasulullah's companions would not move until he took his position. So you're way back there. When you hear Allah, don't move. You have to wait to see the people in front of you. And the people in the first row, all of you are umana. You have a responsibility. We're going to follow you. When Prophet Muhammad made sajda, no one made sajda until he got on the ground. That's a challenge I'm making to you in this community today. That we have to get a grip on the discipline that's ready in the prayer. And this is just an example. If we're doing that, our kids are doing that. If we're not praying in home, our kids are not praying. If we have quarter fact 
and Rajab, 27th is coming. And it's going to be Al-Isra and Miraj and all of this bid'ah and shirkiyat. If we do that, when the kid comes here, that's what's going to be in his suhuf. So in concluding, Ummah al-Islam, al-Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma ajmaluhu min nabiyyan. Wallahi, we all wish we could have been there, but we get a reward, not being there, but still believing in him. So his sunnah, take care of your kids. Hey, sit, sit right, sit right. Take, sit. take care of your kids. Pick attention to those kids. As we make this prayer, Fadi, I'm challenging you in once again. Don't anticipate. Let the imam take his position, and then the whole community takes his position. And I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to finish with this. There may be some misogyny in this city that are bigger than us. There may be some misogyny in that shut that got more money than us. But I know one thing, I know one thing that I have no doubt about. That if a small group of people hold on to this religion and they do it correctly and with ikhlas, the tawfiq of Allah comes on them. And you can be over a billion Muslims in the world and look what's happening to our brothers in Ukraine. Who's going to help them? Who's going to help them? The Muslims, the awliya, the Muslims are the kuffar. They're going to do the siyas of the kuffar, EU, America, whatever. Who's going to help them? I know who will help them. If they're doing the right thing and they're on their religion, Allah will help them. We ask Allah to accept it from us and accept it from you. Make us of those people repentant and truthful in word and deed.